Let's talk about the existence of God. How do we know God exists? This topic is very important for Christians to revisit just so you can know why you believe in the Christian God. And then also for people who are not Christians at all, this video is going to be very important because they are wondering, why do y'all think that? That's a good question. And if you do think that, you should be able to give an apologetic, give a reason for why you believe God exists and where you're getting that information from. What's your evidence? So let's get into it. So usually when this question comes up of does God exist, it's always irritating for both parties, the people who believe God exists and the people who don't, because the people who believe God exists usually argue using their personal testimony. They use that as a way to prove God exists. They're like, God impacted my life. And I mean, they're so passionate and they're just trying to tell you, like, you don't understand. How can you think he's not real? If you only knew what he did for me, all of this emotion and their experiences. And they're trying to give you their personal story and testimony of what God did for them. Now, my thoughts on that is I think that they really are experiencing that. I can speak from personal experience as well. God has impacted my life in many ways. But this is the thing which is a valid argument. There is a lot of personal experiences that I know I've had, that I've heard other people have, of hallucinations, uh, demonic attacks, and other experiences that people have had, even people from other religions claiming to have had an experience with a higher power or a deity, and people will say, no, you didn't, because it's not their God. And other people will say, uh, I don't think that's true, they didn't have that experience, or if they did, it wasn't real, or, and, and people are fighting each other because they're like, your God doesn't have my title. And the reason why this matters is because we have to ask that question. Does a personal experience equal it's real? Is it true? So we're kind of dealing with two kinds of things here because you have the actual experience that you're experiencing with God or a demonic attack or some hallucination. But then you also have the question of, are those hallucinations real in reality? Was my experience with God real in reality? Like what goes on in my head and in my emotions and my experience that I'm feeling, my personal experience with God, what makes that different than a person with a mental illness who's experiencing hallucinations? They, they're seeing things happen. They have beliefs about things. And we would say they have a mental illness you know, maybe a psychiatrist can put them on medication and try to get rid of those hallucinations, you know, and it's like, but for them, they're seeing it. People that take certain psychedelic drugs, people are like, I'm experiencing something. It's real. When we have dreams, I've had dreams where I'm like, and I know everybody else has dreams too, where it feels real. You can touch things. You are experiencing things. It's, it's very real. So what makes it different from belief in God? Like, how do we differentiate between the two? And that is where grounding things in reality matters. So it's nothing against your personal experience and that being valid. The thing is, if other people are going to believe you, if other people who are wanting to believe you, but they're skeptical, they're like, I don't see what you see. What do you mean? And you can choose to be like, well, if you don't see it, I know what I'm experiencing. So this has nothing to do with your actual experience with God, but it has everything to do with when it's time to give a reason to somebody else so that they can believe in it too. And you're trying to show them how great their life can be as well. And the benefits they can get from believing in God. It's helpful when you can be patient and understand the challenges that they're facing when it comes to trying to accept what you're claiming is true. Just put yourself in the shoes with the person with hallucinations. If they were saying, no, there's a lady or a big purple dinosaur walking down the street right now, I see him and he came and he bit my arm. See how I have these scratches? And you're like, there's no purple dinosaur right there. There's no, you know, and that's how people feel when it comes to God. They're like, I get that that's your personal experience, but where is he at in reality? I don't see him. And that's a valid point. So there are ways to have these conversations in order to 
understand each other, reason together. Like we can get somewhere without it being an argument and a big old issue where we get offended and defensive and we disagree with each other and we think each other's crazy and here comes the belittling and the name calling and, and it's like, no, we can be gentle, respectful, we can love each other, maintain that and navigate these conversations, share our experiences, receive why somebody would doubt, give our rebuttal, give our reason for why we still hold to this and think it's true and work through a conversation. So I wanted to get this out of the way as far as personal experience when it comes to defending God, because we're so quick to go to that, especially as Christians, we're so quick to defend God using our personal experience. And I want to introduce other ways to defend the same experience you're having, but kind of apart from your experience, because you can have an experience with God, but God has to exist in order for you to have an experience with God. So are you able to defend God's existence alone apart from your relationship with him? So that's what we're going to dive into in these upcoming videos. That way you can stack on top of your personal experience more reasons for why you believe God exists.